so hello my dear students and learners in my previous video in placement id series i have discussed about the relation between pointer with 1d array now today i am going to discuss the relation between pointer with 2d arrays so please let's have a look on the board now here i am declaring a 2d array having name a with dimension 3 cross 4 that means this 2d array will have three rows and four columns okay so that means this 2d array will contain three fours or 12 elements as a whole okay now i am assigning the values to this 2d array one by one okay so you check that i have initialized this 2d array with 12 integer values now this 2d array 3 cross 4 this 2d array can be viewed as a collection of three 1d arrays okay so each of these row will be represented as an 1d array so this 2d array is nothing but a collection of three one dimensional array okay and each of this one dimensional array actually containing four integer values so four Three are 12 elements this 2D array will contain. Okay, now you also know that the 2D array can also be termed as a matrix. Okay, now I will represent this 2D array in terms of a matrix. Okay, so look at this matrix. The size of this matrix is 3 cross 4, that means 3 rows are there and 4 columns are there, and the elements will be as I have already assigned 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So in this matrix, 3 rows and you know that the row index and column index as well will always start from 0. So 3 rows are there. So index of the first um, row is 0, then 1, 2 and in this way the column index will be also arranged from starting from 0. Now. Although we are viewing this 2D array like a row column format, but actually in computer memory, in RAM, the memory has been allocated for this 2D array in a sequential manner, like an one dimensional array. So now I am, I will draw actually the memory map of this 2D array. Okay, so this is the memory map I have drawn for this 2D array. Now look at this memory map. Okay. So here the name of the array is a suppose the allocation memory allocation has started from address 1001 so this 2d array actually containing 12 elements so suppose the integer takes four bytes of memory so for 12 integer it will take four 12 the 48 bytes of memory so 1001 to 1048 so this 48 bytes will be reserved in a contiguous memory location for this 2d array to contain 12 integer values now here in this 2D array, the each and every individual 1D array is containing four integers. So each and every 1D array will itself will be of 16 bytes long. So each and every one dimensional will array will contain, will reserve 16 bytes of memory. So this is the zeroth row, this is the first row and this is the second row. So each and every one dimensional array will be 16 bytes further along that the previous one okay now here this is the address 1001 this is the starting address so the first 1d array will contain 16 bytes so it will end at 1016 now the second 1d array will start from 1017 from this location so it will also be 16 bytes long so it will be 1032 so 17 to 32 this 16 bytes then lastly the last 1d array will start from 1033 and it will insert 1048 okay so in a two dimensional array if until and unless you are not mentioning both the index okay so here you can check that this is the row index 0 so all the row index are 0 just column index are vary from 0 to 3 so 0 0 0 1 0 2 0 3 so in this in this four location, the first four values that is one, two, three, four are getting stored, and this is the zero row. 16 bytes has been reserved for that. Similarly, now the second row 
we'll start from row index one so you can check for all the four elements all the four elements the row index hpx that is one the column index is varying from zero to one one to two and two to three so the one zero one 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 two and one three look at one zero one 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 two and one three so five six seven and eight these four elements will get stored in the second array second one dimensional array that is the first row we can say this is the zeroth row this is the first row and this is the second row so it will also be of 16 bytes long so here the row index is fixed that is 2 you can check that column index is varying so 2 0 2 1 2 2 2 3 2 0 2 1 2 2 2 3 and in this for location the last four value that is 9 10 11 and 12 are getting stored so these are the indices through which we have represented this element so this is the entire memory map of this 2d array now what i am saying that until and unless you are not mentioning both the index both the indices of a 2 dimensional array the value will not be retrieved so if i mention a of 1 what does it mean a of 1 now what we have understood from the previous video that a of 1 can also be represented as asterisk of sorry if, if we represented a of 0 then it can also be represented as asterisk of a plus 0 and what is this this is nothing but this 1001 that is the address of the first row that is 0th row you can say address of the 0th row so a 0 we are only mentioning single index that means element will not be coming out only you can get an address and if you are mentioning a0 that means it is the base address of the first 1d array and that is 1001 so the meaning of a0 in pointer notation which can be represented as asterisk of a plus 0 which is nothing but the address of the very first row of this 2d array that is 1001 similarly if we want to represent 1017 so what we can do we will write a of 1 so a of 1 in pointer notation it is nothing but asterisk of a plus 1 and this is nothing but the address of the base address of this first one dimensional array that is the first row you can say so this is 1017 okay now what is a2 a2 in pointer notation it can be represented as asterisk of a plus 2 and it is nothing but the address of this second row that is starting from which is starting from 1033 so a2 means it is 1033 so in a two dimensional array when you are just mentioning a single index that means you will be able to reach to the base address of this individual one d array until and unless you are not mentioning both the index like that 00010203 here both the index have been mentioned clearly so that's why we can represent we can reach to the value okay but here by mentioning only a single index we can only reach to the base address of this one d array if we want to reach to the element you have to put the in index another index that is a 0 0 that means one can be represented if you want to reach to four you have to mention a 0 then three okay similarly if you want to reach to eight you have to mention a 1 3 similarly if you want to reach to 11 so it is a 2 then 0 1 2 so a 2 2 is 11 a 2 2 you check a 2 2 what is a 2 2 that is 11 so in this way we can represent a two-dimensional array okay okay now I want to represent the element so suppose I am writing a of i j a i j then what is what is the meaning of that definitely it will be an element because in a two-dimensional array we are representing both the indices so it will represent the element presented ith row and z column so in pointer notation you can write this like that asterisk of asterisk of a plus i plus j so actually when you are writing a i j the compiler internally converts it like that in pointer notation so from the previous video you also know that the asterisk of a plus i can be represented as a of i plus j okay so a i j which is an element it can be represented in pointer notation like that similarly if you want to have the address address of a i j so address of a i j how can it be represented so if we if we will just put an asterisk symbol in front of this equation so we'll write asterisk of m percent of asterisk m percent of asterisk of asterisk of 
a plus i plus j so here this is the value of a i j i have written the entire value of a i j now ampersand a i j so i have put an ampersand symbol now you know that one ampersand and one and asterisk symbol will cancel each other so what we will get we will actually get asterisk of a plus i plus j so this is the ampersand of a i j now this asterisk of a i j can again be represented as a of i plus j okay so look at this two equation that a i j can be represented with these two formulas similarly ampersand of a i j that is the address of a i j can be represented in terms of these two equations in a 2d array okay so now i am going to print some output statements so whenever these statements will get executed now what will be the output that we will check one by one okay so let's have a look okay so my dear student first we will check what will be the output of these three statements that I have printed? Now, what is the first one? Print a percentive, 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 a, comma, asterisk of a, comma, double asterisk of a. As I have just before told you that whenever you are dealing with a two-dimensional array, until and unless you are not using both the index, value will not be coming out. Similarly, in a two-dimensional array, whenever you are using the asterisk symbol, until and unless you are not using both the asterisk symbols, Similarly, value will not be coming out. Okay, so here what is A? A is the base address of this 2D array. And what is this? This is the starting address that is the 1001. So here the first it will print 1001 in place of A. Now in place of asterisk, what is asterisk? So here we are using a single asterisk symbol. So definitely the value will not be coming out. So asterisk of A means what? it will be the base address of this first one dimensional array. We are putting a single asterisk symbol. That means from the address of the 2D array now we will be at the address of the first 1D array. So asterisk of A means we are at the base address of the first one dimensional array which is also 1001. So it will also print 1001. Now look at the third one. It is Double asterisk A. Double asterisk A means we are now using double asterisk symbol. We are dealing with the two-dimensional array. So now the value, value will be coming out. So double asterisk A means 1001. So value present at 1001 now will be inside the 1D array. And this very first element present at 1001 will be coming out. That is 1. So double asterisk A means now asterisk of 1001. So the very first element of this 1D array that is 1. Okay. So you check here we have put A. We have got 1001, the base address of this 2D array. Then asterisk A, it is the base address of the first one dimensional array, that is 1001. And double asterisk A means double asterisk we are using, now value will be coming out. So 1 will be the answer. Now look at the second statement. Percentive, percent, now you, you can understand that percentage we are using, that is the format page for unsigned integer. So we are printing the address. So address cannot be a negative number, that's why we are using this percent u format page file. Now A0. So what is a0? You check that here we are using a single index. So address will be coming out. Now a0, a1 and a2 are representing the base addresses of this 1D array that we have already seen. So it will print 1001. Then a1 that means plus 16 that is 1017 the base address of the second 1D array. And this is the base address of the third 1D array that is 1033. Okay. So 1001, 1017 and 1033. This value will be printed one after another. Now look at the third one. So percentage, percentage, percentage. Again, address will be printed. Now look at this asterisk of a plus zero. So what is this? This is nothing but the a of zero. You know that a of zero can be represented as asterisk of a plus zero. So a one asterisk of a plus one. So a two is asterisk. So it will also print the same value. That is the base addresses of this one D's arrays respectively. That is base address of this 0th row, the base address of this this first row and the base address of this second row that is 133. Okay, so here this is 1000, the base address of this 0th row. Now the base address of this first row will be 1017 and the base address of this second row will be 1033. Okay, so this will be the output. Now we'll check another set of printf statement. Okay, so let's have a look on the board. Okay, 
now i have mentioned another two print statements so we will check what will be the output of this now you check that what is asterisk of a0 plus 1 now asterisk of a0 plus 1 so look at this figure so asterisk of a0 plus 1 although it is looking it is uh, we are looking at this that there we have used only single asterisk symbol but it is not a single asterisk symbol if you expand a of 0 so a of 0 will be expanded as asterisk of a plus 0 so what is a of 0 a of 0 is the base address of the 0 row that is 1001 that means plus 1 means what plus 1 means you are incrementing this 1001 by 4 bytes so you will reach to this address of this 2 that is 1005 and putting another asterisk symbol in front of this that means asterisk of 1005 so it will print the value so it will print 2 similarly asterisk of a1 plus 2 what is a1 a1 is nothing but asterisk of a plus 1 and that is 1017 so 1017 plus 2 means you are incrementing it by 2 for the 8 bytes so 1017 plus 8 that means 1025 so this is 1017 this is 1021 and this is 1025 so asterisk of 1025 means value present at 1025 that means the value 7 will be coming out similarly asterisk of a2 plus 3 what is a2 a2 is the base address of this second row that means asterisk of a plus 2 and it is 1033 so a2 is 1033 now plus 3 means this is 1033 plus 1 then plus 2 then plus 3 so it will reach to this address and what is this address plus 3 means it will be incremented by 12 bytes so 1033 plus uh, 12 means 1045 so that means the address of the last element that is 12 now you are putting another asterisk symbol that means asterisk of 1045 that means value present at this address that is 12 okay so here we are using the percent d format specifier to print the values similarly you can check i have just expanded this previous equation just so the meaning of these two print statements are exactly same so it will also print the same value that is 2 7 and 12 okay so this output will be shown okay so my dear students i i can understand that you um, i can assume that you have understood this concept of pointers with 2d arrays okay so still if you have any doubt any queries so you should feel free to put it in the comment box i will definitely try to give the answer okay so thanks for watching please take care have a nice day thank you